you know what? As I get older, I'm kind of getting used to it. Either that I'm forgetting how much fun I had when I was younger or possibly both of those things. An interesting conversation on on ageing and the benefits of it uh, with John Cowan. He joins us now. Uh, John, kia ora, good morning. Thanks for your time. Hello, uh, yeah, young, young fella. It's <laughs> nice of you to have an old person like me on. I actually had a delightful conversation on Sunday night with Judy Bailey, okay. who's just written a book on how to get old. Okay. Uh, it's basically pretty simple. You just keep on breathing. But she's actually inclined <laughs> to think that you can do it well. You can get, you can slide into your senior years yeah. with more grins and more happiness and things by following a few of the pointers that she puts out in the book. And it's a very good read. So I'd recommend Judy Bailey's Evolving. Yep. That plug aside, I'm now going to steal some of her material to talk to you because <laughs> I found it fascinating as I was going through. And um and, and yeah. hey, there's hope oh, yeah, for all of us. By the way, I am just an. What was that? There's hope for all of us. If Judy Bailey can age well, then I don't know. I'm not sure yeah. there is that much hope. But anyway, keep going, John. <laughs> now, one of the things I had become aware of even before I read that book is that there is a U shaped graph or oh. graph. What is it? A graph or graph? I would say graph. Graph that describes happiness in life. On average, People are more happy when they're young mm -hmm. and counterintuitively counter more happy again when they get older. Does, does, naivety this graph, and, does naivety and senility factor in on, any, <laughs> on either end of the graph? Yeah, for the young, for yeah, the young. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, is, this graph's been called the, or graph, has been called the smile of life. Oh. And the, for many people, their 80s, are their happiest and least anxious decade. Cool. Now, who'd have thought of that? No. Because the stereotype is of stuffy, fragile, afraid of their own shadow people, you know, and of course we all know people like that, just yep. like we all know um, nasty, vile teenagers. But that mm -hmm. the stereotype, those stereotypes are, are not true for either teenagers or old people. Yeah. Um, and so it's counterintuitively. And... <clears throat> I can't because there's a lot of things that are stacking up against us as we get older. Our health and vitality and energy declines. Mm -hmm. uh, most old people, they may have put away a little bit, but they tend to be financially careful and well, financially fragile, we could say. Yeah. They're considered conventionally, anyway, less attractive. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like poor old Judy Bailey, she was ditched because she was about 51. Wow. And considered too old to be reading the news anymore. Grandmother of the That's nation sad. and all that. Yeah. 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 So um, loved ones die off. You know, that's no, that's certainly not a plus to happiness. Yeah. And society is distinctly ageist. Mm -hmm. Old people are discriminated against and derided and barely tolerated. And there's certainly a lot of chatter on. Uh, Facebook and things mocking um, my generation and the older ones, yep. particularly my generation, I think. Perhaps the older ones get off more lightly. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so and yet these older people are quite content mm -hmm. as, as a youth worker. And I wasted, I spent a lot of my life being a youth worker. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of that time trying to tell adolescents what adults thought they should know about life. Mm -hmm. I'd like to carry that on and tell midlife adults the things that they should know so that they can be happier now and also set themselves up for a better old age. Yeah. So Judy Bailey in her book, uh, she captures a very important truth. She says, the benefit of age is the ability to look back and wonder why we managed to get ourselves into such a knot <laughs> about things that we now deem unimportant. Yeah. And that, that's it in a nutshell, shall I reckon. Mm. So much doesn't matter. Yeah. She was writing that in the context of decluttering her house. You know, if you have to go through the process of throwing out a whole lot of stuff that you used to think important, <clears throat> I think something philosophical descends upon you and you realise, I spend so much money earning that stuff. I've wasted so much of my life looking after it. I've wasted so much space in my house caring for it. Now... Mm. I'm throwing it in a skip or giving it away to an op shop, yeah. and, you know, and and not feeling all that bad about it. And so that applies to a lot of things in life: our position, our you know striving, the quality of 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 
our title on our jobs, all those sorts of things. Oh, gosh, we waste so much energy. Mm. And it does make us neurotic and sad and unhappy and stressed. And older people have realized, eh, what was the point? <laughs> let's, go and have a, let's go and have a cup of coffee with my mates. Yeah. Let's, let's go for a bike ride. Let's go hiking. And, <clears throat> you know, there's a lovely term by a Swedish researcher called Giro Transcendence. Oh. The transcendence of old age, because he has spent <clears throat> a long time interviewing older people, yeah. and he's discovered these things tend to be the characteristics of older people. They know themselves better. They become more aware of both their faults and their good features, and so they are more self-aware. They're altruistic, less self-centered, and they reinterpret the memories in their life in a brighter light. Meaning, you know, in midlife, we often look back and we think, oh, I stuffed that up. Why didn't I marry that other person? Why didn't I choose a different career? Why didn't I work harder at school? Why haven't I lost weight? All these things. Mm. In older age, they tend to have this half cup half full, more optimistic. Let's just celebrate what we've got. Let's look back on with amusement and, uh, and, enjoyment on those memories yep. so that's a that's a hugely important thing that we get we don't have to wait till we get our cold gold card to start <laughs> doing these things that's to reinterpret a, memories in a less tos toxic way that's an important point uh, john and i wanted to ask you about that because you I mean you talk about this uh this smiley bell curve do we have to have a dip in the middle can't we go from happy naive teenagers to um uh to content octogenarians do we have would, to have the misery would, in between in order to make this work? I would hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> I, I've even wondered whether we should start recruiting uh, for our youth workers and our churches and things from um, retirement villages because okay. I'm sure these old people would have much more wisdom to pass on to young people about how to live their lives well than the uh, depressed middle-aged mid, mid, middle people that do get involved in those things. You know, yeah. We yeah. do get neurotic in midlife, and so maybe we can interpret these things. Now, some of the things that perhaps make older people happy is they become more flexible, not in their joints. No. I mean, I don't bother <laughs> bending over to pick up any cash that's less than a ten dollar note now. You know, it's, it hurts too much. Yeah. But they become more more flexible in their thinking. Now, again, this just challenges the stereotype. But this mm -hmm. is the research. It says that um, they enjoy challenging societal norms. Wow! Remember, the people that are old now are the people that fought for women's liberation mm -hmm. and gay rights and political reforms and the uh, literally old uh, hippies. You know, many right? of those rebellious things of the '60s. Those people are now, you know, riding around on bicycles and gangs like my group, <laughs> and uh, you know, <laughs> grey-haired and creaky and wrinkly. Yeah. But they've got that, you know, they've got that flexible way of thinking. They appreciate the gray area between rights and wrongs. Mm -hmm. They're more tolerant, they're more broad-minded. I can remember when I was pastoring in churches, the people that you had to battle against were the people in their 40s and 50s Terrible who became people. incredibly um, stretched and strict and strict straight laced and would fight for the you know the good old ways of doing things and things and terribly counter -pro progressive and uh, mm -hmm. so many things the old people didn't give me any problems at all wow. whatever worked they would be happy to go for it and so that's an old that's the thing we could learn from our old people to start think you know it's oh anyway old people also delight in small things mm -hmm. you see that when they're playing with little children yeah. finding butterflies and stuff like that they're considerate and they're curious now as i say this isn't all old people. Yeah. I bet you know some old people that are horrible, just as like you can. <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah. And I bet, but, I, but that's not the norm. And so don't think that that, that image of being a, a cranky, fragile, old person, um, that doesn't need to be uh, your, your, your future. Mm. You don't have to think that's what's waiting for me. Yeah. Anyhow, how's that? I, 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 Young fella? It's, ch it's cheered me up already. Uh, John and uh, and and hey, uh, I suppose looking at things within that perspective, any day above ground is a good day once you get past a certain age. And uh, and as yep. far as we know, it beats the alternative, uh, yep. old age. John, appreciate your your uh, wisdom as always. Thank you very much for being on the program today. Cheers.
Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.